Hi everybody and welcome to Greedy 3D. Well today in the Greedy 3D man cave we gone resin. We bought ourselves a resin printer and we're going to show you how to make that on it. Tune in for Greedy 3D. <laughs> now personally I've had FDM printers for probably two years now. Uh, I've had gone through about three of those. Never really thought about a resin printer. The reasons behind that was, uh, if you read some of the stories on uh, on the tinter web, you've got to clean them with alcohol. It's dangerous. You've got to wear gloves. You've got to wear masks. It always put me off them. The smell was allegedly awful. Um, and so until I moved into the man cave, doing it in the bedroom really wasn't going to be an option anyway. But now, obviously, with the man cave here and... Uh, me having a little bit of space to do stuff like that we jumped in and we bought a printer so first of all let's have a look at which printer I've gone for um, it's the Elegoo Mars 2 Mono here's a little something from the Elegoo website I got it off Amazon pay just under 200 quid for it have a little look see what you think of the printer pretty good printer hey eh? So um, let's just look at some of the things and the horror stories that you hear about them. And then we'll look at uh, creating a model on it. And we will look at the Captain America zombie that I, that I made on it. Now, the Captain America zombie, I would never, ever, ever be able to make it in the detail I've made it on an FDM printer. To do little, small, detailed models, you need resin. I'll be the first one to say that. And I've been FDM from day one. You need resin. OK, so... Um, this is the resin that I've bought here. And as you can see, it's the water based resin. So I'd never heard of this. Basically, resin comes in two forms, either the normal resin or the water based resin. And the normal resin, you have to clean it with alcohol. It's smelly. It's messy. It's a bit horrible if you get it on you. The water based, you clean it with water. You don't need alcohol. You don't need this IPA solution that I read all about. You just clean it with a little bit of soapy water. Um, you still got a lot of messing around post process. You've still got to take it out with your gloves on and your mask on. You've got to wear your PPE and your safety precautions. Stick it into your water, give it a swill around, rub it with a toothbrush uh, and then give it a really nice swill. And then you have to cure it with an ultraviolet light. And I'll show you what I've done and how I've set it up in here. So, so that works for me. But it's really not that much of a faff. I wish I'd have got one a long time ago. Um, the smell to the one I've got, this water-based one, I can't really notice it that much. There's a little bit of a smell, yeah, but it's not horrendous. So if you've got doubts about buying a, a, a resin printer, get one. Um, I'm going to show you the Captain America zombie now. We'll have a really close look at the detail. And anyone with an FDM printer will know you cannot match this quality on FDM. It's, it truly is incredible i'll talk a bit about the painting process i did with captain america as well and some of the paints i've used and some of the little tips and hints that i've got and um, hope you enjoy it's a little bit different today but uh, stay tuned so here's where we found the captain america zombie bust it's on cults 3d um, again it's a free download there we go so we've uh, we've downloaded this onto the system and we're going to open that up now in a program that we use to uh, to look at these files. Uh, Chitterbox is what it's called. So let's have a look at this file loaded into Chitterbox. OK, so here we go. We've opened up Chitterbox. Let's open up the file that we downloaded. Uh, it's on our desktop and it's called Captain Head. There we go. So anyone that's used Cura or the like will be fairly uh, used to using slicer software like this and as you can see you just drag the file in on the left you can move the file you can rotate it you can scale it all the sort of same things you can do um, on cura the the only thing that's different on this and i found this with with uh, we all resin models really um, and there's lots and lots of youtube videos relating to it is the supports now these need supports and you've got to make sure the supports are good if you go into that little section up here and choose uh, auto support or you will see that what the system does it puts supports on um, now on the whole the advice that I can see written all over the internet is that you probably might want to just check it through and add your own supports if you look in certain areas you can see there are little areas of red and you can also see that when you're in the support setting if you hold your support over those areas it will 
add more support in. How cool is that? So if you see any areas that are red like that, just uh, add a support in or two. Really won't hurt it. Won't use huge amounts of resin. And um, by doing that, you are definitely then going to get a guaranteed, he says, guaranteed, uh, you're going to get a much better chance of it coming out in one piece uh, and not have a foul print. Just look at that. Isn't that marvellous? Um, slicing is exactly the same on here as it is with any other. You would just slice it. You would save it into your printer and you would tell it to print. So uh, we've done that. We've printed the file. I've uh, got it all ready for paint. So we'll come back and we will we'll show you that uh, the final model all painted. I'm not going to go through the process on this of painting it. We'll have a discussion about what I did do. Um, but I'm not going to go through it uh, step by step and, and show you the whole thing. Um, one thing I did notice as well, these supports, wow, they just pop straight off. When you get it out, you wash it in the water first, take it out and pop them off. A little bit of warm water if, uh, if they're a little bit tricky to get off, but I cannot believe how easy these supports came off. Again, resin printers, it is the way forward. Okay, so uh, that's the process. Um, don't be afraid of it. It's certainly not any different to Cura. Um, and let's have a look at the, uh, the final printed, all painted up product. So just before we look at the end product, I just wanted to talk you through a couple of the bits that I think you need with this printer that are a necessity. So obviously you're going to need the printer itself. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. Now it comes with some accessories. It comes with this, which helps you pour the resin back into the bottle. Comes with a few tools to scrape the model off and uh, clean it up. This cracking little gadget there, uh, it doesn't come with, but that cost me, uh, I think it was about three or four quid from Amazon. I'll pop the link on there. Bit of soapy water in there, a little bit of a toothbrush. You clean your solution in there and then you need to cure it. And what I bought to cure it was that it's an ultraviolet light there and uh, and a little uh, turntable that's operated by the um by the sun so if we turn that on there you go you can see that the ultraviolet will now be hitting the model that's sitting on there and look at that turning it all around to get every angle of it a few minutes is all you need to cure them and uh, that is the process then once the model's cured you can paint it as you would normally you also need your rubber gloves and your face mask or alien hat as it's turned into today and um, really important you wear the PPE I can't stress that enough and something over your eyes as well you don't want it splashing into your eyes and that's all you need for uh, for the printing process so now we've had a quick look at that and I'm not going to go into huge detail because the internet is full of uh, videos of what to do with resin. So um, let's have a little look at the end result, the Captain America bust that we've all painted up and uh, we'll talk about some of the paints we've used as well. So there we go, there is Captain America all painted and finished. Now I've used a selection of Army Painter paints which are readily available from Amazon to do this. Um, first initial spray was with some uh, ultramarine blue and then I just worked around the rest of it. Now as you can see there, uh, if you look at the head, there are a few little dots where the supports have come off. I could have sanded them out but I decided they added to the effect so I actually left them on. Um, used a little bit of gloss in the mouth and on the eyes to just light them up but I think you'll agree the quality of the actual print is amazing. Now the base was done on an FDM. Um, I did that because it was quite a big base and I didn't want to use too much resin but the actual face and neck were all done on, on uh, resin printer on my, uh, on my Mars. Now look at the detail in that. You, you just can't get that on an FDM. Incredible. Again look at those eyes oh spooky um, and again one more of the uh, army painter ground terrain base so there we go captain's done new resin 3d printer is in the house and uh, really pleased with it hope you've enjoyed today's video a little bit different i know to normal but um i thought it warranted just doing a video specifically for the resin printer that we've we've just had and and, uh, and again the first thing that i've done on it 
um, the cap. So um, stay tuned for more videos. We'll do some more resin videos. We'll do some other big model builds. But uh, hope you've enjoyed today and uh, stay tuned till next time. Captain says goodbye. <laughs>